Hey there, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're taking a look at a story that's pretty sweet. Oh. Whoa, sweet. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. This month, we're talking about how we can trust God to help us do what's best. I trust that you have a reason for a gallon of honey? Yeah, I ordered it for the first aid kit. First aid kit? That, that makes zero sense. Actually, honey has antibacterial properties. It can kill bad germs and keep a wound or burn from getting infected. So, instead of a Band-Aid, it's Honey-Aid. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, little problem, though. Yeah, see, I thought I ordered a tiny jar to fit it inside the kit. Well, what are we gonna do with all this honey? Well, I can only think of one thing. Honey challenge! First challenge! Honey once created a complex mystery for some French beekeepers. I hope we don't need to know any French. I know some ratatouille souffle escargot. Oh, 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 oh. oh. mm. In 2012, beekeepers in the Alsace region of France discovered that their bees were producing green and purple miel, or honey. Your challenge is to tell us why in two sentences. Wait, that's it? Don't we at least get multiple choice or something? Nope. Ugh. Um, okay, um, the bees must have been getting pollen uh, from, from purple flowers. Don't they do that anyway? Well, um... Uh, the bees were so cold, they turned purple, and so did their honey? That's just ridiculous. Uh, what about the green? Okay, fine. Uh, oh, the bees infiltrated the story lab and took a bunch of our... Uh, food coloring. Well, we certainly use enough around here. Yeah. Is that your final answer? No! Yes! Incorrect! It turns out the bees had been visiting a nearby factory that was processing waste from production of some well-known bite-sized candies in colorful shells. What? <sighs> Sounds as though the bees like these even more than you do, Z Put down the colorful candies. This is not the colorful candy challenge. This is the honey challenge. I thought we were done. No, it's time for your second challenge. Creating honeycomb. Creating honeycomb? I don't think I'm cut out to be a bee. It's tasty, edible, honeycomb candy. On second thought. Oh, the pipe, heads up. There's another one. There's two. And another. Um, I, I, I got honey and, uh, and, and water. This one says sugar and baking soda. These sounds like ingredients. Yeah, but what's it for? Uh, oh, oh, remember he said the honeycomb challenge. Oh. Oh, look at this. Okay. What's it say? Oh, it's the recipe. Oh, perfect. Okay, let's set up. Yeah, yeah. Hey, honeycomb candy is pretty simple. Oh yeah, what's the recipe say? Uh, it says step one, mix a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of water, and two tablespoons of honey in a large pot. That's it? Yeah, perfect. All right. That's the sugar, okay. Then the water. There we go. And then the honey. Now you start. Oh, perfect. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Put your left hand. Okay, what next? All right, it says step two. Make sure your pan for cooling the candy is ready by lining it with foil and non-stick spray. Oh, perfect. Step three. Get a grown-up to help you heat up the mixture. It needs to reach exactly 300 degrees. And 300. <laughs> ah, 
Now, now's the fun part. And the sciency part. Step four, take two teaspoons of baking soda and stir it into the heated mixture. When added to the hot mixture, the baking soda releases a gas that gets trapped in the caramelized honey and sugar. This produces air pockets, just like real honeycomb. Now I see why we needed a large pot. You got the pan ready? Yes. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. When can we eat? Uh, uh in a couple of minutes. Uh, but while we wait, it's time for the story before the story. Today we're in the book of Proverbs, which is a collection of wise sayings, many from King Solomon. Solomon became king at a very young age. He was worried about leading an entire nation with so little experience. One night, God spoke in a dream and told Solomon that he could have any gift he wanted. Solomon could have asked for money or power. But instead, Solomon asked God for wisdom so he could be the best leader for his people. God listened and honored Solomon by making him the wisest man on earth. Many of the things Solomon learned and said were written down together with other wisdom. The sayings called Proverbs are short sentences or stories that help people make wise decisions in their everyday lives. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian and I love Proverbs for a lot of reasons. Most of them are super short and to the point, and some of them are pretty awesome word pictures. Take today's verse from Proverbs 25, 16. If you find honey, eat just enough. If you eat too much of it, you will throw up. In Solomon's time, people didn't have much sugar of any kind, so finding wild honey was a big deal. It was probably tempting to just eat the whole thing. Most of us really like sweet things too, our brains are wired for it. Say your dad makes some awesome fluffy pancakes with butter melting all over. You're probably gonna squeeze out a little honey or maple syrup to drip down the sides, yum. But you take that honey jar and keep squeezing. That's when something good turns bad. We all know what's gonna happen if you eat that entire plate of pancakes with a whole jar of honey, right? Ugh. Your stomach is gonna stage a rebellion. And everything that's down there is gonna come up and, uh, and out. We don't need a reenactment. Oof. Too much of a good thing is too much. And Solomon's wisdom goes for any good food. Cookies, cake, candy, ice cream, pizza, lasagna, eating one serving of those things tastes mighty great. But if you don't know when to stop and just keep eating, you're gonna make yourself sick. Even something super healthy like water can overload your system if you drink way too much, way too fast. But Solomon wasn't just talking about food. See, God delights to give us good things. God wants us to enjoy them. But any good thing can get out of control and cause trouble if you don't know when to stop. Think about the sun. One of my favorite things in the world is time at the pool or the beach. The water, the bright sunshine, maybe sand castles. But if you stay out too long, uh, especially without reapplying sunscreen, your skin may be pretty painful the next day. Or maybe your thing is video games. When you're playing your favorite game, you feel like you're on top of the world. Yeah, you just can't wait to beat the next level. Boop, 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 boop. And the next one after that. Boop, 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 boop. But if you don't take breaks boop, 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 and spend some time in the real world, boop, 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 you're gonna feel grumpy boop, 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 and jumpy and even end up with eye strain or a headache. It could even be something as simple as riding your bike. It feels great when you pick up speed with the wind rushing in your face, but you go too fast and it's super easy to lose control and meet the ground way harder than you meant to. Knowing when to stop and actually stopping are not always easy. It takes self-control, which means trusting God enough to do what's best even when you don't want to. 
When you ask God for help and practice self-control, over time, you can start to live by the wisdom recorded in Proverbs 25, 16. If you find honey, eat just enough. If you eat too much of it, you will throw up. Uh, mm, that is the end. I'm suddenly craving pizza. And ice cream and chocolate chip cookies. Well, tasty treats are okay in moderation. It's all about knowing when to stop. So what's our part in the story? Well, you can start by trusting God and asking for help to practice self-control. And self-control is choosing to do what's best, even and especially when you don't want to. Like knowing when to stop. Yeah. Like, sometimes I know I need to stop eating potato chips, but then I keep doing it anyway. Self-control takes time and practice. When we follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. Self-control is actually part of the fruit of the Spirit that develops in our lives over time. And we get lots of chances to practice. God's given us so many awesome things to enjoy. Ooh, video games. Hanging out with friends. Awesome snacks. Stuff like soccer and baseball and dance. <laughs> All great things, but every one of them can cause trouble if you don't know when to stop and you let them take over all of your time and energy. That's a lot of good knowledge right there. True story. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Know when to stop. And I know a great way to practice. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's like fluffy on the inside. <laughs> Are you ready? Cheers. Mmm, so mm. mm. delicious. Mm -hmm. How much do you think it's too much? Mm. I think we do one more bite. Mm. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See you next time. Mm. One more.